Okay, here we are. We're going to talk about complex solutions and polynomials today. And one fact that is true, that I know if I have a polynomial with a complex root of a plus bi, then I know if a minus bi, the conjugate, is guaranteed to be a root as well. Complex roots, they always come in pairs. So this is true. And that is true if my coefficients are all real numbers. So here's an example. If I know this particular polynomial has one zero of two minus three i, then another zero I know for sure is two plus three i. And if I want to find the third zero, because it's an x cubed, I can use these to find it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write these out as factors, because I know these two factors will also make a factor of the uh, original polynomial. Now, to multiply this out, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to take the parentheses off, but I'm going to rewrite it as this. So minus becomes a plus 3i. Oh, and let me rewrite that bracket. And this one becomes x minus 2 in parentheses and it's going to be a minus 3i. When I choose to write it like this, please note that now it is a difference of square scenario. So the middle term cancels. So it ends up being x minus 2 squared minus 9i squared, which I know to be x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 9. So the quadratic factor is this one here. If I want to find the other zero here, I can divide by this. But one of the things I know, if I think about this, is I know this factor times some mystery factor of x something has to be x cubed plus all the way to minus 39. The only way to get minus 39 is going to be 13 times negative 3. So if I check x equal 3, so x minus 3 is the factor, if I use the factor theorem, if I do x equals 3 and I plug it into this equation, I should get what I'm looking for times 3 minus 39 which is 27, 9 minus, times that is 63, plus 79, minus 39. And when I do that, I can see this is 0. And so the zeros of this polynomial are x equals 3, x equals 2 minus 3i, and x equals 2 plus 3i. Some of the other options I could have done when I looked at this particular scenario is I could have done long division into here as well. That would work as well. There's lots of ways to do it from there. Finally, I'm going to mention the, fun the fundamental theorem of algebra. And I know that if a polynomial has a degree of n, then it has n roots, some of which may be repeated. So the polynomial, this has a degree of 3, so it would have had three roots, these three here. If it was to the power of four, it would have four roots. Some are repeated. When you get a, what's called a repeated root, that's when you get, it, here's not very mathematical, it bumps off the graph here, it just touches here. So if I was going to rewrite this, my roots are minus two and zero. In factored form, it would be x plus two squared. That's how I know it's repeated root and it bounces and then this would be just x. That would be the equation of that line there. So the fundamental theorem algebra says if I have a degree of n, there are n roots.